Hey guys, it's Bub here. And in this video, we're taking a look at Windows 11 build 26100, which is the latest build that is currently available in the dev channel, as well as what is speculated to be the RTM version of Windows 11 24H2. It seems very far away from the 24H2 release date, so I'm actually a little confused on how this is considered the RTM version, but hey, let's take a look at it, let's see how it looks, and go from there. Now in this video, we're not actually going to do like our typical what's new. We're going to just take a brief look around the operating system and maybe look at a few new features, but this is not going to be my deep dive. I'm holding off on that until 24H2 officially comes out, as I'm sure many things will change between now and then. The first thing I notice is that this is the all new setup screen, which we've actually taken a look at before. I honestly prefer this, it looks more modern. Although I don't like the purple background, it just looks makes it look older than it is. Clicking next, um, we are going to go ahead and get this installed onto this virtual machine. Yep, install, and there we go, we are now installing. Alright, and here we are in the out of box experience. Now I don't believe that there's that many changes in the out of box experience, I mean it should pretty much seem exactly like it did um, in previous versions of Windows. Um, so one of the big things that Microsoft is focusing on here that I'll get into while we're waiting for this is AI. AI has been such a core focus of Windows for about the past year, um, and up to this point it's really been ramping up. Um, now we're going to see something called an AI Explorer, which can look at any of your past activities similar to the timeline feature that was available in Windows 10, but this will work with any apps, and it will remember what you're doing by what you're looking at. Um, other AI features include a feature called Super Resolution that has the ability to upscale the quality of videos and games that you play on your PC, which does sound pretty cool, um, but I'm not actually entirely sure how that's going to work. Um, you know, how good it's going to work, is it going to work good on lower end systems, things of that nature. It's not functional yet, but we can take a look at it in this build. There are also file explorer improvements. It's not a full redesign, but it's getting the ability to create 7-zip and tar files among other archive types. 23H2 got the ability to open these, but we can now actually create these. And that's where I'll stop describing because we're getting into the operating system. Alright, and here we are. So the first thing we're going to do is install VMware tools, and typically I do that before I start recording. But I just noticed that <laughs> the default Windows background is actually gone. And it's been replaced by default, I mean straight out of the out of box experience, with the Windows Spotlight. And just to put in perspective, this is Windows 11 Pro. Um, and it has, I mean, it has this by default. It's got the icon in the top left, or top right, sorry. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like Windows Pro should not do this. Um, I don't. I would. I would really hope that Windows Enterprise does not do this, but I would think that Windows Pro would, you know, be a little bit better. But apparently not. I might have to move my license to Enterprise because I'm getting tired of all this this crap getting added to my operating system. All right, and here we are. So the first things first, we can actually see Copilot down here, um, and I actually am not sure how to activate the new AI features that I was talking about. Um, I honestly believe I might need Vive tool to do that um, and of course Microsoft Teams opening up that's just how Windows works uh, somehow I opened Edge and here is another thing that I wanted to mention here as you know with Windows 11 regular um, when you right click you have those icons at the top like your copy paste they're all at the top now when you right click to copy and paste you can actually see labels and they're bigger I don't like this. While it's good and I think it should be an option, they just take up way too much space now. It doesn't look too intuitive. I just don't like it. A new thing here is sudo for Windows. So under system for developers, which I assume is on because of the fact that this is an insider build, we can turn on sudo for Windows. And what this does is it will allow you to elevate permissions for a command in a command prompt window. So I'm actually curious to see how this works. So if we run j just, I'm, if this runs, okay. As you can see, we're getting access is denied. Now guys, do not run this ever because this command uh, destroys windows. So 
do not ever run that command. But if we run sudo, there we go, del c slash s slash q, and I'm most definitely going to regret this, so I got to get ready to. Pr there we go. So I didn't actually want to run it, but it actually asks you if you want to elevate from directly in there, which is something I like because there's a lot of times that I'll open command prompt and I'll forget to actually elevate it. So that is very useful. There are also new energy features that I don't believe we can take a look at because I'm actually not on a laptop, I'm on a desktop. Uh, but yeah, there are new energy features in this build. Uh, further on, we can't test it again. You are able to use a phone as a webcam. Uh, it's not in yet, but it will probably rely on a phone that's compatible with phone link. Furthermore, again, can't show it off. There is more support for ARM, so ARM is better optimized, and there's no more support for 32-bit ARM apps. I am personally excited to see how Microsoft handles the change to ARM. I personally love my ARM MacBook Air, and it's making me want to buy an ARM MacBook Pro. I am very excited about the future of ARM, and I really do think that ARM is the future. Moving on, quick settings, which is down here. That's actually the wrong one. We should be able to customize this a little more. As you can see, there's arrows here. Um, and Okay, I think that's everything for some reason. But it does, it just looks a little different. And there's some of those new energy saving icons there. This will be the first version of Windows to support up to uh, 40, up to 80 gigabits. So that's USB 4. Um, Bi-directional up to 80 or single direction with 120. Um, and it will be supported by laptops such as the Razer Blade 18 from 2024. With that being said, this was just a very brief overview of this build. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure if this is 24H2 or not. Uh, it is rumored to be the RTM, but I guess only time will tell. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe for new ideas to do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.